This is a demonstration I did for my second year quantum mechanics class this morning. Um, at the moment we're talking about wave particle duality and they're all familiar with the electron being a particle. Uh, that's what you learn in high school and even in first year. And then in second year you suddenly get confronted with this idea that the electron can behave like a wave. And so I wanted to give them some real experimental proof that this actually happens. We brainstormed out a few different ways of doing this. Um, one way is to do Young's double slit experiment with electrons, and that turns out to be rather hard to do. Uh, you can do things like optics, for example, and again, that's hard to do, but it allows you to make things like uh, electron microscopes, for example. One of the easy ways to uh, prove that an electron behaves like a wave is to do diffraction. Um, some of you will be familiar with uh, Bragg's, Bragg diffraction in materials. And so what you have is you have a crystal with a set of planes, and if you shine an X-ray in at some angle, that X-ray will reflect off the surface and will reflect off the next plane and so forth. And those reflections can interfere with one another and you will get a set of interference maxima and minima that allow you, if you know the wavelength, to be able to determine the spacing between the crystal planes. Now if an electron is a wave, you should be able to do exactly the same thing. And the apparatus that I have here effectively does exactly that. Okay? The configuration is slightly differently, but it is slightly different, but the principle is exactly the same. So let's have a look at this piece of equipment. Very similar to um, picture tube in your television at home, assuming that you haven't spent your Kevin Rudd bonus on buying a brand new plasma television, in which case it's no longer true. But if you have an old school television um, and you break it open, on the inside you will find a glass vacuum tube, much like this one. There will be a screen at the front and you'll have an electron gun at the back. Now the electron gun's fairly simple piece of uh, apparatus. What you have is you have a filament, so it's just a small piece of wire, just like in a light bulb. You pass a current through it and it heats up, and when it gets hot there's enough energy in there for electrons to jump out of that filament. Okay? So those electrons jump out of that filament and then they'll quite happily jump back in again. But if you have a positively charged plate somewhere over here, when the electron jumps off it goes, hey, there's a positively charged plate, I'm going to head over that way. So it starts accelerating off in that direction. And if you arrange for your plate to have a slit in the middle of it, you can have your electron will come along, attracted towards that plate, and it will go straight through the middle and come out the other side. Okay? And what this allows you to do is take electrons and speed them up to some velocity and fire them at things, literally like a gun. Okay? So the electron's fun starts at that point. By the time it goes through this positively charged plate, it's traveling at a 100,000 meters per second or so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slam it into a target. Okay? And that target is going to be just a, a mesh coated with graphite powder. And graphite has a really interesting structure. It consists of a set of sheets. Each of those sheets has a set of carbon atoms in them and they're bonded together in a hexagonal arrangement, much like chicken wire, for example. And each of those sheets stacks on top of each other to make a, a piece of graphite. Okay? Graphite's really nice in that sense that the planes can slip on top of each other and that's why graph graphite gets used as a lubricant quite a lot. So if you're, for example, lubricating a lock when it gets a bit sort of... Uh, Gammy, what you might do is take a pencil and shave the graphite off the end and take a paintbrush and sort of paint that graphite powder onto your lock. The planes slip against each other and make a good lock lubricant and your lock moves really easily again. Okay? Now the nice thing about these stacked sheets is they give um, a set of planes for the electron to diffract off. Okay? And so your electron will start at this filament on the back it will get accelerated by a, a voltage across a set of plates in the middle. It gets slammed into this target, which is right at the front here. And then the electrons will go through that target and come out the other side, and they will travel through this space here. Now, this space here is in a vacuum. We've taken all the air and water molecules out so that the electron doesn't bump into them and get distracted from what we wanted to do, which is to end up on this screen at the front. The screen at the front is much like the one on your television at home. It's a material known as a phosphor. And in a phosphor, when uh, electron strikes it, it gives out a little bit of light, okay? And so we will have electrons crashing into this screen at the front, and they will start giving out light out the front. Now, on your television at home, what you have is you have three different kinds of phosphor, and they go in different colors when they get hit by electrons. So one will be green, one will be red, one will be blue. And what you do is you take little spots of this phosphor and you arrange them in little triangles, red, green, blue, and you make that triangle go all the way across your screen. So it's red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. And you take the target out, you don't want that because it's going to mess up your image, but you still have this electron gun at the back. And what you do is you add an extra set of plates in here 
that then allow you to scan your beam backwards and forwards. So you go left, right, left, right, left, right, run down the screen, go to the top, do it all again. And you turn your electron beam on and off and you can slowly build up a picture by hitting the red, green and blue pixels, right? So imagine you want to make a white pixel, you'll hit red, green and blue. If you want to make blue, you'll just hit blue and you'll have it off when you hit red and green. You can make any colour you want by adding those colours together. It's a television set, right? This is fairly similar. similar. Okay, so coming back to the idea of the experiment, we want to try and determine whether the electron is going to behave like a particle or it's going to behave like a wave. So let's look at what behaviour it should have. If it behaves like a particle, it should come through here, should smash into this graphite target, come out the other side, and the particles should just scatter all over the place. And so the image that we should see on this screen at the front will just be this blurry green mess where all the electrons are hitting at random on the front of the screen. If the electron behaves like a wave, it should get diffracted by the planes in the graphite. Okay? And so what should happen is that for certain directions, the electron wave will interfere with itself and it will interfere constructively and so we'll get a bright spot on the screen. And in other places, the two waves should interfere destructively and we should get a dark patch. All right? It's all just about whether you have uh, the path difference is equal to an integer number of wavelengths. If it's equal to an integer number of wavelengths, you get constructive interference. If it's, equal to, if it's not equal to an integer number of wavelengths, you get destructive interference. And so if you look at the front of this screen, we should get a, a bright green spot right in the middle, which corresponds to electrons that just punch right through and keep going and smash into the screen. And then moving away from that, we should see a, a dark band where you get destructive interference and then a bright band where you get constructive interference and a dark band and a bright band. And these things should form rings around this central spot. Okay? So this experiment allows us to tell is the electron a particle or is a wave by whether we see fuzzy image on the screen or whether we see rings. So let's fire it up and have a look at what happens. So the first thing we have to do is we have to supply power to the filament so we can turn that on. It's going to be rather difficult to see on camera even if I do a close-up, but it's just here in the back and it'll be glowing bright red hot. If you go home and you've got an old TV, you can look through the vents on the back of it um, and you can sort of see inside the box. And you might notice that there's a glowing uh, red light inside. That'll be the filament in your electron gun. And then the next step of this process is to put a voltage on the set of plates that are in front of the filament so that we can um, take this electron that comes out, provide a positive volt um, charge out here and attract it out. Okay? And by setting that voltage we can control the speed that the electron travels with, which allows us to control its momentum. And if you know the de Broglie relation, it relates the momentum um, it says that momentum is equal to Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. So the higher the momentum we have, which is the higher velocity we have, the smaller the wavelength gets, right? And so we should see diffraction in this experiment when the wavelength gets small enough that it's comparable to the separation between the planes in the graphite. So what we need to do is turn up the voltage here and we need to turn it up to a fairly decent voltage, a couple of thousand volts, in order to get the electron to be travelling fast enough that its wavelength is comparable to the plane spacing in uh, our graphite. But as you do it, at first, the first thing you'll see is there's a little bright green spot turning up on the screen. It's just there. And as we turn the voltage up higher and higher, these rings will emerge. It's going to be rather difficult to see from uh, this angle because uh, unfortunately I don't have blinds in my office. But we'll go to a close-up and uh, we'll have a look at those rings.